Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is your first time watching. This here is a 1950 Cat D4 that was sitting for an unknown amount of time out in the woods. This here is my shop assistant, Charlie. Oh geez. And then uh, my name is Matt and uh, let's get right to work here. So I think on this week I'm going to start out with the transmission. Before I get to that though, I want to talk about this uh, steering clutch control that I was working on last week. So if you saw last video, you'll remember that there's these, well right here there's four bearing spots, but there's another four that are inside. None of these eight bearings you can reach and you can't uh, grease them when they're actually, once they're installed. Not a very good system. So my idea was I was going to drill these out slightly because they're like five, about five to ten thousandths too, uh, too small. And then I, I ordered one of these. This is a sealed needle bearing. So the seal would prevent dirt from getting in and the grease would stay in there and they wouldn't rust out. And then I would just put these in. So uh, my original plan was to drill it and I even, I even ordered a drill bit. And if you look at something like this and you've ever done any kind of machine work before in your life, you just, this is obviously something that's just going to snap off immediately, right? Um, and I, and I, was, I was worried about that. A lot of people mentioned that too, that you know, these are hardened and they're just not something you can easily drill. But what I had seen is that these things are so rusted that you could probably get away. You might be able to drill that. But then someone suggested, and I'm actually, frankly, I'm a little bit uh, jealous that I didn't think of this, is just to use a brake hone. Because since I have to remove so little, you know, you could just hone these out and then uh, be good to go. So I gave that a shot. I did not film it, but uh, I gave that a shot on these, these top two spots here. And you can look in here. I don't know if you can see that, but they are smoother. I only had to hone it for about, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute. And then we'll see if this still fits in here. So this bearing is just, it's tight, which is what you want. And uh, if I get a mallet real quick, give this a little tip or tap. And, oh, and it went through too far. So this, uh, both of these shafts right here go into a bearing. This one I have not cleaned up obviously, but this one I have. It's a lot smoother and I, and I had to take a little bit of material off to fit in there. But uh, you can see it'll just go, pops right in there. So over here, you can see it's in there, it's turning in the bearing. Now both the shaft and the bearing are protected. Uh, so I think it's a good system. Well, in a previous video I talked about this, but if you didn't see that, I need to take this nut off of this shaft, which has a specialty eight pin uh, key on it. It's a specialty cat socket, which I cannot locate. So I'm gonna have to kind of jury rig my own socket here. It's on there really tight. So I already tried, you know, a, a pipe wrench. I tried hitting it with a hammer and chisel and, and it just, it was beating it up. So I got this old socket here. This is a 36 millimeter. I think I bought this for an old motorcycle I had. Don't need it anymore. And then I got some tool steel, three pieces of it. So I think I can hopefully rig something up here and uh, get this thing off. Let's give it a shot. All right, well, this is getting a little rickety here. I can't get a clamp in to hold these things in place. So I'm gonna have to eyeball the first couple. I just need to tack it on here. Uh, maybe I need to do this with my other hand. Okay. Okay, I got the first two tacked on. They're lined up right, but I can tell it's just going to be just a little bit too tight to fit over here. So I'm going to have to come in after I'm done and grind just a little bit off of all these to get this to work, I think. Right, let's try this out. See if we can, oh, yeah. All right, perfect. This is where we need to be. So now I can just go and tack the other six on here, spin it around as needed, and uh, just try to keep it on here straight. I don't know what the chances are of this thing working, but I guess we're gonna find out. Well, 
this is definitely not my finest welding. It's really tight, so I'm gonna hit it on here in a place. Just broke a tooth already on that thing. Well, this is pretty much what I figured what would happen. Since this is tool steel, it's really hard and strong, but it does not bend. It does not like bending, so they've got a crack there. Those broke off. There's a crack here. Did I see any other cracks? So I'll weld these cracks up, and I'll add in a couple of uh, these back in, and then I'll add some bracing in between the, the spokes here and see if that works. Well, I had this lying around. It turns out this fits in here, between here pretty well. Just need to grind this down a little bit and I can run one of these between each of these and I should be, I think I should be good to go at that point. I guess we can give this a shot. Um, oh man, this is some just nasty. <laughs> uh, oh, that's burning, that's burning through my glove. Okay, well if this doesn't work, I got a couple other ideas, but let's just go ahead and try this one out first. See how bad it is. All right, cheater bar on. Got it really. Oh, come on. Wants to. Oh, it's on there real good. Let me stay on there. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you could see that, but my breaker bar was really bending there. Um, so I'm gonna do the really dumbest thing possible and use my impact on it, see if I can break it loose. I got a full face mask on for this one because obviously I'm not gonna trust this horrible welding job. Anyway, here we go. Oh, that worked. It worked. Somehow it worked. The worst welding job in, in the world, missing a tine, but uh, it held together somehow. All right, now that that unpleasantness is out of the way, this is the same exact thing to get off this front cap off as before, how it's the top one. There's just, you use the same screws that screw it in on these two positions and it just pushes, pushes it away. It's very simple. And we're about to test my theory on if I can replace this bottom gear without pulling the top shaft off again. Got it. According to the manual, this should just come out now, but it's not quite. Let's do this a few times, maybe. Oh, yeah, that worked. Nice. Okay, got the first spacer out. So the plan here is I'm gonna slide, you slide the whole shaft out through the rear, that bottom shaft there, and that there's enough room for it to go out that hole. So I should be able to get the whole shaft out, and I need to just be very careful to keep all the gears and spacers in order. Just kind of lay them in there as I pull it out. And then the gear I'm replacing is that back bottom one, of course, it's the hardest one to get to. So I'll just go real slow and hopefully this works. And I'm standing up on top of this thing right here. Let's see if I can get this thing loose. Let's move it. So I'm just gonna use my hand to make sure stuff doesn't roll around in here. Like that one just wants to. Okay, we're off two gears now and one spacer. 
there. Oh, I guess I can move this around. That's helpful. Can you still see there? I guess we're kind of over in this area now. Oh, there we go, got it. Okay, we're at the last. Oh, there's another spacer there. Try to save, keep the uh, order of, I mean, the orientation of the spacers too, the same. All right, here's, here's the gear. Got it. We did it. Okay, before I put this new one back in, I just want to show you this harebrained scheme only is possible because I have the winch off and the steering clutches are out because this has to come out enough to get that shaft out far enough. So that was my uh, that was my hope going into this. All right, with that said, let's get the let's get it back in. New gear. Put this in the right direction. Watch it not fit over the shaft. Did I just jinx myself? What's going on? Nope, oh, there we go. Man, that's tight on there. All right. Next spacer. Same orientation. Man, getting these gears on this. These gears are really tight. I guess that's a good thing, but not good for me right now. Okay. Next spacer. Next gear. It's way harder from this angle. Let me move. heavy it's also a very awkward angle oh I'm out of breath gears in everything looks good so I don't remember I already forget if this goes this is a bent but I think it's this this goes inside because there's a there's a cavity there pretty sure it worked that plan worked I got lucky so uh, now I just need to make up these gaskets, I re need to redo these gaskets again because the sealer I put on ripped them up. And uh, then we'll be done with the transmission. All right, well here is the bad second gear. That's not too bad to replace. So here's the bad second gear. This is the bad first gear, which I removed off the top shaft quite a while ago. This one had some bad teeth on it. I don't know what I, I don't want to keep these, but maybe I'll, uh, so, I mean, you could repair these if you really wanted to, uh, if you're really desperate. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll throw them up on eBay for like five bucks or something and help someone out if they need it. Otherwise, they'll just get scrapped. I'm going to revoke what I just said. Uh, I think this surface right here is a perfect size for that. So, obviously, that goes there. This is probably bent outwards so oil can get in that, easily can get into that bearing. And then this just goes flat up in there. Makes a lot of sense. It lines up with air, so okay. We'll we'll uh, I'll double check, but I'm like 99% sure that's correct because that that's what would make the most sense. I'm gonna go ahead and reuse one of these gaskets for this one. And uh, the reason there's two reasons for that. One, this is in pretty good condition. It's it's actually in really good condition. And two, I'm a little bit worried about using a thicker gasket like one that I make. Um, because I think this gasket helps set the depth on the shaft and I don't want it to sit too far away uh, Especially with that that nut that I have to get keyed just perfectly on here. So that's why I'm just gonna reuse this one and uh, I don't think it'll leak. It's in, it's in good condition There we go Oh, I just learned something so I was spraying these bolts down with brake cleaner to get the grease off so I could put Loctite on. And these are vinyl gloves and brake cleaner completely dissolves vinyl as soon as it touches it. So I was wondering why my gloves were melting off my hand. You know, I made the same mistake on the top shaft now that I remember it. There's another cover that goes over it and then these bolts go on. So I was trying to put these bolts on first. At least that got this thing set back all the way though, this, this plate. So I still need to get the shaft pushed forward. What's happening right now is the shaft's bound up on this, this bearing. It's not wanting to go all the way through. 
So um, I'm gonna have to hold this bearing in place while I hit in from the other side. Give that a shot. All right, so I got this spacer in right there, which is a dead blow hammer to stop it. And then hopefully I can hammer on it from this side and get it pushed back into that bearing right there. Let's give it a shot. Yep. All right, well now for this nut. So this is the part I'm not looking forward to. I have a couple bolts in just to anchor this so this doesn't spin. And uh, if I can get this on here and torqued up without breaking this horrible homemade socket, I might just be going out and buying uh, some lottery tickets after this. I got my impact turned to medium here. Get some safety glasses on for this one. All right, I'm gonna go for high speed, just a little bit more. It needs to go just a tiny bit more. That might be it. Let's find out. All right. This in. Oh, yeah, that popped right in there. There we go. Okay, it's in. What a relief. I never really checked how loose the shaft was in here before I took it off. Or if I did, I forget. I think it's a little bit loose, though. Like, a, there's a little bit of forward and backward play, if I recall. I'm just thinking about the nightmare situation where like that nut was supposed to go on a, a full other turn, which I just don't think is possible though, but you always got to wonder. Anytime you do transmission work. All right, and I'm going to torque this to spec, which I think was for 3 8 grade 10. I'll have to check. I think it's probably around... 20 foot pounds or something. All right, maybe put the in sha input shaft in. That's upside down. I had to clean these threads off again since they had Loctite on them from last time. But this is far enough in now to draw it in with the bolts. You know, I just made the same mistake for the third time now where I start putting all the bolts in with Loctite. I just need to, I just need to draw this down first and then I'll I still have to put the cap over it. I don't want any dirt in this new seal. go. Okay, transmission seems to be buttoned up. I think that's first gear. And I think, is that reverse? No, that's like high gear. So I think what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put the shifting forks in. Uh, where is that thing? I don't know, oh, over there. I'll put those in and uh, make sure everything is uh, works and is aligned properly and I have put it all back together. All right, I got the fork assembly here. It, was, it had a lot of surface rust on it here and there. Um, so I brushed it down just to get the big rough stuff off. And uh, I didn't go too crazy with it though. Is this how this went on here? This doesn't look right. It's backwards. I think they're all in there. 
So that red stuff, I just put some engine lube on there, uh, assembly lube, just because it's probably gonna be a while before I have uh, any fluid in there and I'm gonna be messing around with the transmission, spinning it, and I just don't wanna wear anything else down more than it already is. And I'm assuming I, put, I need to put grease in here before I uh, put the top back on. So let me bolt this down and then uh, we'll do some check, checks here and see if it shifts into all the gears. So we got uh, these locking tabs on there. Okay, I grabbed the shifter. So everything is reversed since it's, there's a, ball, a joint in here. So when I push it, this middle one back, that should be first gear. Seems to be working. Okay, well all the gears line up okay. It goes into each gear, reverse, makes the rear shaft go reverse. So I think we're good. And I guess it's just gonna be onward to the clutch setup. All right, before I put the clutch back together, I gotta replace this thing with this one. If you missed it on a previous video, this one's way out of spec and there's like, a, well you call it like a throw out bearing on a car, but it's just a collar that goes around here and it was jingle jangling a little too much with a new one. So looks like there's just some cotter pins here. So I will uh, cut those out and replace this and be good to go. These pins, by the way, um, are not worn at all. They're in great shape, so <clears throat> it's a good sign. So you can see that uh, there's kind of a spot where it goes past. I guess that means it's good. Well, I think I'm ready to put the clutch together. I'm just gonna wipe this, this surface down with brake cleaner. It's pretty dirty. There's a little ding on here. I'm gonna see if I can just tap that down so it doesn't dig into the pressure plate. Okay, I'm trying to remember how this thing goes together. So I think this is the front plate. This is the shaft. This is the transmission side, the shaft. So probably align that on there somehow. And then put on this one, which is very heavy. Okay, I think I put this on next. Oh, no, see. This has to go on first. That's kind of tight for now. I'll just go ahead and tighten this, this nut, which pinches it on there. All right, now I think I can put this in. Before I drive it down though, uh, I'll get the rest of this on here since it's kind of convenient to work on. So that goes here, I think. So I think these are set up for like one side. Yeah, this, this side that's flatter, you put the lock thing on here. So I think it goes like that. You know, this collar came with new bolts and uh, wouldn't you know it, they're metric. It threw me off for a while. <clears throat> now one thing I remember when I was taking this brake plate off is one of these screws was completely loose. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some Loctite on here. And I also got a new lock washer. Okay, I think that's it for this. I just gotta put the nut in on the other side. This isn't gonna be not fun. You know what, I think what I should do is put this shaft, I think I should put the shaft in the transmission first and then I can just slide this whole thing in. That would probably be way easier. I don't, the instructions don't really have a assembly instructions, but let me give that a shot. I wanna know, has anyone ever installed one of these and forgotten the key? <laughs> Cause wouldn't that just make the whole thing spin? Okay, I got the uh, paint ground off the the flange here, so I, this will probably make it a little bit easier. Let's see, maybe we should do it sideways. And 
Now this way it won't fall out, hopefully. I think I got to put this over first and this is kind of just going to be a dry fit because I still need to replace this um, I don't want to have the whole clutch just sitting on this shaft because there is a lot of play in that bearing I don't think the bearings worn it's just the way it is this is supposed to ride up in the pilot bearing so um, and then also the whole thing supported by this collar too okay so these are the old uh, clutch brake pads and this is some new material I got from McMaster, it looks, it's a way thicker. I don't think it should matter. If it's too thick, I can always just get more. But uh, go ahead and mark the template on these. Well, obviously that, that's not gonna give me enough precision. So I'll see if I get away with using a jigsaw here. Yeah, this jigsaw works really, really nice. All right, well, I'll be the first to admit it. This is not my finest work here, but uh, it's all, it's aligned and all these things are countersunk. It's just really ugly, but I think it's gonna be fine. This stuff's really um, bendy. It's not really brittle like normal brake material. And it's, uh, it's supposed to be really high performance stuff. So I'm sure this will be fine. It's just really ugly. If I could do it again, I would probably do a better job now that I know what I'm doing. So one other thing on the, on the previous video, uh, I was talking about this bushing in here, and I, I think I didn't say the right thing. So originally I thought, you see if those grooves in there, I thought those were supposed to be full of grease. And there was a bunch of black stuff in there that I just thought was dirt. But then I got this other bushing in. So this is a new old stock cat bushing. Um, and you can see the grooves in there, but they are impregnated with some material. I'm assuming it's graphite. Uh, it's the same thing. This, this goes in the uh, transmission cover. And, and the bearings in there, they had the same grooves that were empty. So I, I'm assuming that's graphite. Um, so besides this bushing missing all that graphite, it's actually still really tight. So I'm just going to pack it with grease. And uh, it'll hopefully be fine. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to go get another bushing for that. And uh, it's like I said, it's it's really tight on there. I mean, it's it's uh, not worn at all. So I'm just gonna pack it with with like Molly grease and um, same for for this and this, which go in that socket and this socket, and then we'll uh, we'll call that good. All right. This is how this goes together. Right now for the heavy part. My am I able to get this on here without Yeah, it's coming back to me now. I remember when I took this thing apart, I took the whole shaft off with it. And uh, obviously I'm not doing that now. So I think uh, I think that's what's throwing me off. Which actually, this works better because then I can uh, I can kind of I don't like how the shaft is loose in here. I don't want it to like hurt that bearing. So I'll just uh, go from here. One of the this this there's a right side up on here. Let me find it. So the real question is, when this clutch comes back, see how it's contacting the brake plate right there. Hopefully, because this brake plate I think might be a little bit thicker than the actual one. I think that should be fine though. I'm sure you can adjust that out. I just don't want it to always hit. I guess this is just gonna hang on here for a while. 
If this actually works, this is not a bad way to do this because this way you don't have to lift. This, this clutch assembly weighs like 80 pounds. It's kind of hard to lift on there. All right, this is the hard part here. Maybe, maybe it's easy, I don't know. Okay, so now I gotta screw that on. I'm not sure how far to tighten, but I can always, I'm gonna leave this loose right now. These are the uh, pinch nuts. I'm just gonna leave those loose and then I will adjust at a later time. Actually, it's kind of working right now. So right now the clutch is engaged, not very tightly though. I mean, there's obviously some adjustment to do. Let's pop it out. This is spinning in here. I don't know, I just don't know how much farther to adjust this thing. There's gotta be, maybe I'll look in the operator's manual. There's gotta be some directions on how to adjust this thing. So now that's probably, that's probably too far. Maybe, let me see. Yeah, I think that's too far. So maybe I'm right on the cusp of where it's at. Right there, see that's, that's locked. Of course this, this thing isn't centered. It's gonna be a chore to get that centered because that has to be perfectly centered to go into the, uh, into the flywheel. No, I think this is good enough for now. So it's in there, the clutch is engaged. Um, I just need to go and I'll read, the, I'll read the operator's manual and see how to adjust it and then I'll tighten that when I'm done. So there's an adjustment point here obviously where you can turn that. There's an adjustment point on here. There's really no other adjustment points. But this whole assembly now is just way tighter than it was when I first got this thing. So I think we're in a, we're in a good spot here. Just really, I, the last thing I need to do is get that spring, pull it back, it's contacting the brake plate. I think, I think this is good. So uh, I guess we'll just leave it there for now. All right, well, I think I'm gonna leave the video there. This is probably a lot of stuff that I did this week. Um, I don't, I'm not sure how long the video is gonna be, but I feel like I accomplished a lot. Got the transmission 100% done. Clutch, 95% done. So uh, I think I'm gonna start focusing again on this. I uh, canceled, or I, I submitted a loss, a loss form with the USPS on that Polar, and I ordered another one. So that'll be here in a few days. And then I can really start getting in on this thing, which is probably gonna be a lot of fun. I know a lot of people are uh, a little worried about this because this is kind of a dangerous job. That's, and I, and I knew that, and I did buy a special tool just for the D4 to compress these springs out. So before you do the springs though, you have to pull the hub off, which is what I'm, I need to do first. Uh, but once that's out, this is a nicely made tool. I got it from General Gear, and that'll make the springs a lot more safe to pull out. I hate, hate, hate working with springs. Um, I'm, in, in fact, I'm just dreading replacing this spring over here. I mean, that's just gonna be a nightmare. I just hate dealing. <laughs> I mean, these springs, this spring probably weighs, I'd say 150 pounds maybe. Maybe not that much, maybe 100. And I, I don't even know how the UPS delivered that here, but somehow they did. And uh, I, I can only imagine how much energy is stored up in that thing. And then it's also, you know, 70 years old, old metal that's rusted. It's just uh, frankly a little bit terrifying. So I'm not looking forward to that one. All right, guys. Well. Thanks again for watching, I really appreciate it. And uh, you know, it's starting to look a little bit nice now. There's a lot of shiny parts kind of bolted to it. And uh, once I get that cover back on, it's gonna look pretty nice. And we're getting close to the end maybe. Maybe by springtime of, you know, 2025, I might be pushing some dirt around with it. And uh, that's gonna be a whole another challenge because I've actually never even used a bulldozer before. So there'll be a little bit of a learning curve there. Um, so anyway, that's it. Thanks again for watching and I will see you real soon.